So use case number one, again, simplest of our use cases, all it is is a layer to transit from port A to port B. All the use case number one constructs are going to be isolated within a tenant, right? So you have a, your tenant, you have your application profile. Within an application profile, we are going to create an EPG. EPG, every EPG needs to reference a BD. So we are going to create a BD. Within the BD, we are going to disable unicast routing. There is an option in BD to disable or enable unicast routing. Since we don't need unicast routing, we are going to disable it at the BD level. Every BD needs to reference a VRF. And see, since we don't really care about which VRF it, it will be, it, in our case, we are going to take a default VRF which sits in the common tenant. At the EPG level, we are going to have static path bindings or simply path bindings, which is going to where we are going to add all the physical ports that need to have that VLAN extended amongst one another. Now let's log on to the controller and take a look what it looks like. Now I've created a tenant called Tapan Test Tenant 1 and I have an application profile, use case number one. Within this application profile, I've got an EPG and if you go under the EPG configurations you would see there's a BD that has been created over here. Now if I go inside that BD, I've got use case one BD and over here the VRF is common default VRF just like we, we, we discussed and over here you can play around with these settings but but for migration purposes, I think it serves in the best interest to keep these settings to behave to, to, for the fabric to behave like a regular regular VLAN. So flood layer two unknown unicast, flood layer three unknown multicast, and multi destination flood in BD. Now, like we had discussed under the layer three configuration, this unicast routing option is unchecked. All right, and that's pretty much it. Uh, oh yeah, so on the static port standpoint, so whatever ports that need access to that particular VLAN, so VLAN 100 in our case, needs to be extended on, uh, 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 need to be listed over here. All right, and again, there are no contracts, there are no subnets, there is nothing else, pretty straightforward of a use case. Now let's take a look at use case number two. Use case number two is very similar to use case number one except it has some additional items like um, a layer three gateway and uh, there might be situation where you need contracts. So you, again the same model you have a tenant within a tenant you have an application profile within an application profile you have an EPG an EPG references a BD and, in, and, and this time since we are going to be using, using unicast routing the unicast routing needs to be enabled and BD needs to reference a VRF and in our case in this example I'm going to use a private VRF and we will be using some contracts and again static path bindings to extend this particular VLAN onto multiple physical ports. Now there is a debate that where, do, where should we keep our default gateway or the gateway IP. There are two options in ACI we could put that at an EPG level and we could put our IP at the BD level. Now since we are focused on the migration, uh, I highly doubt that there will be situations that you will be creating multiple EPGs on the same network or on the same BD. And this gateway IP on EPG gives you some flexibility as far as route leaking is concerned. So from, from my standpoint, I always try to keep the gateway IP at the EPG level. Now let's log on to the fabric and see what the configurations look like. Now we have got use case number two, an application profile. Within this application profile, you have a, a use case to EPG. Within this EPG configurations, now if you go under the configurations, you're now going to see a use case to BD. Let's go to the use case to BD. Again, same flooding all around. If I go to layer 3 configurations now, you see that unicast routing is checked. Now if you want to advertise this route on any kind of a BGP or OSPF layer 3 out, you need to associate that layer 3 out over here.
Now back to the EPG configuration subnets. The subnet is listed over here. Uh, most likely, we'll be advertising this sub uh, subnet using OSPF or, or uh, any kind of uh, dynamic BGP routing protocol. So that's why advertise externally needs to be checked. You can also check shared between VRF. This will enable this, this subnet to be, uh, to, to, be, uh, to be leaked between your uh, VRFs if you're trying to do any kind of route leaking in future. Static ports, just like, just like use case number one. And contracts and over here you might start seeing some contracts and 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 what I would really see in these use cases I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to consume contracts in this construct and not provide con contracts in this particular in this particular construct so that's pretty much it from the configuration standpoint as it relates to uh, as it relates to use system oh yes one more thing uh, at the BD level when we are defining VRF you see it's not the default VRF anymore it's the private VRF all right, so that's pretty much it from configuration standpoint. Now let's take a deep dive into use case number three. Use case number three is actually the most complicated of the use case just because there is a static route on that particular, that particular subnet. Now, the constructs are going to be a little different. Uh, of course, we are still going to use our same tenant at the top level. And when we go down, instead of creating an application profile and, and an EPG, we are going to be creating a layer three out also known as external routed network or external outside or something like that, uh, but, but, but commonly known as layer three out. So at the layer three out level, you have to define a VRF. And in our case, this VRF is going to be the internet VRF because it has that static route that we spoke about in our use case. Within the layer three out, you need to create a logical node profile. There is an option of creating multiple logical node profiles, but I would recommend that you just create one logical node profile per layer three out. Within the logical node profile, there are two things that need to be uh, created. One is you need to add nodes to your logical node profile. Each node is basically a leaf switch. So you're adding a leaf switch and, and on each leaf switch, you are adding a static route. At the same time, on logical node profile, you need to also create an interface profile. This is where the interface are going to get defined. So your either your SVIs or your routed or your sub interfaces need to be defined at the interface profile level. Another construct within layer three out is layer three out networks, which also needs to get created. Layer three out network is where you define the uh, the subnets that that exist within this layer three out. So over here, I would expect to see the static route subnet as well as the interface subnet. From contract standpoint, just like on an EPG level, you have contracts defined at, uh, you, you apply contracts to EPG. Over here in layer three out, you, you define contracts at the layer three out network level. So that's pretty much it. Now let's, let's, uh, let's go to the ACI fabric and take a look what the configurations look like. And again, there are no application profiles. We are going to be going to external routed network. Within the external routed network, you have a layer three out. And again, over here, you see there is a VRF that is defined at the layer three out level. And this is the public VRF for connectivity to the internet. And within layer three out, you have a layer three, uh, you have a node profile. Within the node profile, you're defining the nodes. So over here, I define node 105 and 106. You have to define the router ID for each of these nodes, as well as I'm adding static routes. Remember, static routes need to be added to each and every node separately. So over here, you have 92, 92, 92, 0, 0 slash 24. Next stop is 91, 91, 91.4. Similarly, on node 106, you've got exact same configurations. Now, going back to our use case, this is what we are trying to do on the static route level. We are creating a static route 92, 92, 0 slash 24, next top 91, 91, 91.4. And we have, we, since we, this is going to get migrated to leaves, we are trying to do that on the primary leaf as well as on the secondary leaf. Now let, let us look at the interfaces. So within the node profile, you need to define the interfaces. Again, I would recommend just create one interface profile, do not create multiple interface profiles. And on node 105 and 106, you would see 
you know, you, these are the ports on port one, node 105, port 148, node 106, port 148. So HSRP IP address gets translated into the secondary IP address. And the physical IP address is your, you know, regular IP address and you have your end cap, which is VLAN 200. Now, if I dig deeper, VLAN 200, IPv4, 9191.91.2, HSRP.1, and similarly on node 106. Over here, you need to be very careful if this is a routed, routed interface or routed sub-interface, you might have to configure um, HSRP policies, uh, otherwise it might re lead to MAC address flapping. So if it is a routed interface, you will need HSRP policies on top of this. Another thing over here is if you have any kind of uh, data plane uh, policing, so if you have rate limiters or things like that, you can define them over here at the interface profile level. All right, within the layer three out, we had another construct which was layer three out network. So within the layer three out network, you're going to see a couple of, you need to add a couple of subnets. And this 9191.91.0 is basically the directly connected subnet, 9191.0 slash 29 and 9292.92.92.0 slash 24. And there are different scopes that are available. I'm not going to go into details of these, but uh, if you check external subnets for external EPG, it will allow contracts. Contracts are going to apply for this particular subnet. And if you do export route control subnet uh, in kind of some kind of dynamic routing, it will allow that subnet to be to be advertised out. So that's pretty much. Oh yeah, on the layer three out network uh, again, contracts tab is over here. You can provide and consume contracts if you would like. So that's pretty much it for all the use cases um, standpoint.